Can we give her a round of applause? Thank you so much, Emma. That was wonderful. Uh, welcome, good morning, to our daily chapel this morning. I am the pastoral intern for the year, Tori Reamer. I work alongside Pastor John and Pastor Babette and Janice as well. Um, there's some announcements in the bulletin. I won't read them all, but feel free to take a look at them. There's some scholarship opportunities as well as some upcoming events that we have. Uh, we also welcome the baseball team with us here this morning as we celebrate your season. Um, even though it's still winter outside, we know that spring is quickly approaching. So with that, let us center our hearts and our minds and our spirits for worship this morning, channeling the divine in whatever way you experience it. So our creator has made us in their image. Each tendon and muscle is made in the image of their kingdom. Let us move with grace and power. Let us give thanks with each breath and the blood that pumps through our veins. Let our acts and movements serve as a reminder that the divine has made all things good. Amen. reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say 
rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Well, welcome again to the baseball team and everybody else. I'm Pastor John, as Tori mentioned, and it's so good to have you here. The beginning of a new season. I'll share, begin by sharing a little baseball story from my past. I don't, I don't play baseball, but I, I watch baseball. And a traumatic event in my life happened on October 14th, 2003. Cubs versus Marlins playing at Wrigley Field in game six of the National League Championship Series. Cubs were leading the series three to two, and were leading this game three to zero, the top of the eighth inning. Cubs starting pitcher Mark Pryor had thrown 100 pitches, three hits, zero runs, pretty solid game so far, one out. And on a one-on-one -on -one count, Pryor throws a fastball to Marlins batter Luis Castillo, who hits a fly ball into left field foul territory. Cubs outfielder, Moises Alou, runs to the wall and rises up as he had done so many times before to get an easy grab before the ball landed on the other side of the wall, which would have been the second out, which would have meant four outs away from the Cubs winning the series, winning their NLCS pennant, uh, first one since 1945, getting the World Series for the first time since 1908. Big moment, just gotta catch that ball, right? You know this is probably not going in the best direction because Alou's glove, he was there. It was in the perfect place to get the ball. Anybody know what happens next? Bartman, right? Is that, I hear you say that, Keith. Yeah. In the frenzy of those Cubs fans, they could grab that historic foul ball and one set of hands in particular got in the way and deflected the ball from the path, which would have inevitably ended right in Alou's glove. And Alou comes down to earth, and he takes off his mitt, and he just throws it to the ground. He's so angry. And we come to learn pretty quickly that the hands of the one who deflected the ball was named Steve Barton. Steve Bartman. And as you would predict, all hell breaks loose. Moises Alou was angry. The crowd is booing this poor guy. And he just sits there in this seat, just crouched and embarrassed and shamed. And in case there was any doubt, for those of us watching at home on Fox, every about 10 seconds, close up of this guy's face, you know? And the next morning, front page of the Chicago Tribune, zoomed in, a pixelated photo of this poor guy just screwing up this easy catch. Because what happened next? Well, after this easy out was missed, Cubs pitcher Mark Pryor throws a wild pitch, walks the batter, advances the other runner to third, and he continues having a like, complete meltdown on national television and loses eight runs in the rest of the inning. Cubs lose the game eight to three. Next day, Wrigley Field, they come back and they lose again. They lose the series, end of the season, and it's pretty, pretty devastating for Cubs fans. And no one has forgotten the name of that kid from the Chicago suburbs named Steve Bartman. And his, the harassment of Bartman, as you would predict, was swift and dangerous. Within minutes of the Cubs losing, his full name and address had been posted on MLB chat boards online. They had to post six state trooper cars outside of his house. The governor of Illinois suggested that perhaps he needed to enter a witness protection program. And what is that, you know? Baseball is supposedly this game of beauty and grace and perfection. 
And yet baseball fans can be murderous. I think to think about that sacred ground, that baseball diamond, right? It's long been thought of as this neutral space where traditions and rules and norms bring this sacred sense to the space, this kind of opportunity for a perfect game, right? So when a Steve Bartman trespasses upon that space by reaching his fingers into the Holy of Holies, it's a violation, it's an abomination. It's a cause for righteous anger and even violence, right? We don't talk as much about the historic meltdown of that Cubs team. Instead, the system needs someone to blame. The system demands that we punish an innocent person in order to preserve the supposed peace and integrity of this other sacred thing that can't be called into question ever. Here in Daily Chapel, we've been thinking about and recognizing Black History Month for the month of February. And as a person of Northern European descent who daily participates in and benefits from systems of white supremacy, baseball is worthy of my attention because I love baseball. It's a great sport. And it's kind of a microcosm for us that can either give us a glimpse into how the human family to which we all belong can reflect the multiracial, multi-ethnic, beloved community that God desires for us, or baseball can show the harm and violence that any system built on these white myths of goodness and perfection and law and order at the exclusion of others can reap in our communities and in our lives. After all, Steve Bartman, sitting in the stands, he had it good compared to a Hall of Fame baseball player on the field named Jackie Robinson, who finally broke baseball's so-called color barrier in 1947. Robinson won Rookie of the Year after his first season with the Brooklyn Dodgers, and as I'm sure you know, was openly mocked and assaulted and harassed at every game in that so-called perfect and beautiful baseball field by an all-white mob, both in the stands and in the dugouts. He went out and dominated the sport and came home to death threats. And even as Jackie Robinson was making history for integrating the major leagues, the segregated professional league of all black players had phenomenal players like Satchel Paige and Josh Gibson, who, though eventually admitted into the MLB Hall of Fame and posthumously have been considered among the all-time greats, they spent most of their historic and record-breaking careers making five times less than their white counterparts in the all-white league. And that's the kind of learning I've had to do as a white person, that our systems can sometimes, our games, no matter how beautiful and wonderful they are, can be corrupted by these lies. The Jackie Robinsons of the world have had to work harder and play better in order to earn just the smallest shred of dignity, the smallest bit of admission into a system that has long excluded them. And even though we see this, we're still terrible at changing these systems, at changing the culture towards one of inclusion and acceptance where all receive dignity and worth, but paying reparations where they need to be paid to our siblings of color who continue to this day to experience barriers to power and to wealth. And until we learn by being in them, by playing in these teams and in these systems that we need to reform them for the sake of our siblings, innocent lives that we've been remembering this month, like Amir Locke and Jamar Clark and George Floyd and Dante Wright and Philando Castile will continue to be taken right here in our city that we love of Minneapolis. And then the system will go about not thinking of itself critically, but thinking about the bad apples, you know, 
and then kind of criminalizing these young men who were killed for being sort of deserving of the horrible, the horrible death that they died. And I bring all this up on Baseball Blessing Day simply to invite and, and celebrate these baseball players of Augsburg to know that you are on this beautiful field in a beautiful game, but you're also leaders there, participants within a system that it's within your power to nurture and tend and cultivate as a space for dignity and joy, equity and grace. As we heard in our scripture, let your gentleness be known to everyone. Rejoice always. Gentleness, joy. Make of that field a sacred ground in which fierce competition brings deeper love. Where your participation in a game actually reflects to you and to those who will come to watch you, like me, <laughs> what beloved community can look like in action. Shortly before his assassination in 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, quote, Jackie Robinson made my success possible. Without him, I would have never been able to do what I did. My friends, finally, the vocations that we each possess are what God will use to bend the moral arc of the universe ever so slightly more towards justice for all, including on the field, in the classroom, in the home and the workplace. God is meeting you and each one of us there, calling us to lives of meaning, joy and justice for all, using us to dismantle every system that yields inequity and to replace every myth of supremacy with the sacred and holy truth of the inherent love, dignity, and worth of all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. light of mine and we're going to sing this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine and then we're going to sing all around the bases um, <laughs> I am a baseball mom I'm a huge fan and um, it's so fun to have you here I'll probably see you out on the field with my two sons here we go let's stand yeah. this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine drawn around a person to protect, heal, and strengthen. 
The beauty of the blessing is its belief that it can affect what unfolds, invoking the power and promise of the divine. So today we offer this blessing for our student athletes in our midst and those who coach and mentor and guide them. So today at the beginning of this new season, we wish to offer this blessing for the Augsburg University baseball team. Holy One, bless this Augsburg baseball team program. It's athletes, coaches, trainers, and leaders of our community, that they may grow together in unity, respect, and mutual compassion. Keep these athletes safe and healthy during their practices, trainings, and games as they navigate the rigors of this season. Expand the horizons of their minds through their academic pursuits and studies, that they may grow in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Give them lives of balance and fullness Challenge them to stretch themselves mentally and physically while offering comfort and balm to their weary bodies and brains. Bless the coaches to be fair in their expectations of the athletes, constructive in criticism, and gracious and enthusiastic in encouragement. Awaken the giftedness of each team member and build in them the confidence to show up and leave everything on the field holding nothing back. Bless them to be kind and fair to their opponents and to play with integrity and good sports personship. May they see every teammate as a sibling and every opponent as a neighbor. And finally, may these players and coaches strive diligently and tirelessly to have fun, play hard, and do their best to be humble in victory and compassionate and loss. Team members, coaches, and staff, with courageous curiosity, we offer you this blessing. And together we all say, Amen. Amen. Coach, do you want a picture of all of you? Yeah, some of them get my head to go Oh, mm -hmm. you ready to get around? You don't have to run until all the top, so we're done. Yeah, yeah. We're Please, yeah, get the yeah. picture. Yeah. You got your camera.